Welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we've been discussing the sacraments of the Catholic Church, and so far we've talked about reconciliation, baptism, the Eucharist, confirmation, and matrimony. Now the sacrament of holy orders. Specifically, what's the result of being ordained? What kinds of new duties and abilities come with ordination? The powers given by the sacrament of holy orders fall into two classifications, power of orders and power of jurisdiction. Powers of orders are about administering the sacraments. Priests can administer most of them, though there are some that only a bishop can do. For example, only a bishop can perform the sacrament of holy orders. Power of jurisdiction is more complicated, since it's about teaching and lawmaking, in order to help save the souls entrusted to the ordained man. Often, priests and bishops are required to make judgments on the basis of the church's canon law, and whenever that happens, they have an obligation to be faithful to the truth, and teach and instruct the laity with the true laws of the church, even if the laity don't like it or appreciate it, and even if the priest or bishop himself doesn't like or appreciate the church's laws. The various levels of jurisdiction in the church are arranged as follows. 1. Priests who are pastors are in charge of a parish or congregation under their bishop. 2. Bishops are in charge of a number of parishes or a diocese. 3. Archbishops are in charge of a number of dioceses, a province, or an archdiocese. 4. Primates are in charge of the church provinces of a nation. 5. Patriarchs are in charge of a whole country. 6. Finally, the Pope is in charge of the church throughout the whole world. Jurisdiction can sometimes be used to prevent priests and bishops from carrying out their ministry. In that case, they still have the power to offer the sacraments, but it would be sinful to use it if it goes against the judgment of their lawful supervisor, like the local bishop or the pope. There are also cardinals who have the job of advising and assisting the pope in governing the church and electing the pope when an old pope dies. However, their jurisdiction isn't necessarily any greater than that of a bishop or archbishop. There are also monsignors, a special title given to a priest as a mark of esteem. It has some privileges, such as the right to wear purple like a bishop. There are some other titles given to certain priests as well. For example, the vicar general is basically the bishop's aide, who has the authority to exercise his power. An abbot is someone who performs many functions over a religious community, which are similar to those that a bishop performs, except not over a diocese. Those are the most common results of being ordained next time. Why do we need priests? Is there a good reason why it's important for us to have priests? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.